Well, hello. It is Wednesday, February the 7th, and it's church night. We're excited about going to the house of the Lord here in uh, a few hours. We trust that you'll be found faithful in God's house tonight as well in a good local Bible-believing New Testament church. And if you're looking for a place to worship, the Free Gift Gospel Mission would certainly welcome you. We are an independent Bible-believing church preaching Jesus Christ as man's only hope for salvation. You're not going to be able to get there on your own. You need to go through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what we preach at the Free Gift Gospel Mission, and we'd love to have you and your family tonight at 7 o'clock. We've got a message that we have studied on today, and I'll be preaching from the book of Acts, chapter 8 tonight. I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about Stephen. I'm going to talk a little bit about persecution and the Apostle Paul. And, uh, you know, what should be our response to persecution and things of this nature? You know, the Bible says that all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So it's going to come on you. If you're doing what you need to do in obedience to God's word, you won't be able to sidestep it or get around it. It's going to come on you. And uh, when this world hates you, we need to be reminded to marvel not because they hated the Lord Jesus Christ first. Well, we're glad you're watching this afternoon. Um, maybe you're watching today and you're brokenhearted, you're down and discouraged. I've been thinking about that this morning. And, uh, you know, it doesn't uh, take someone who's poor or unlearned or impoverished or any of these things to be brokenhearted. As I go about my life and I observe people on a daily basis, I've come to understand that the rich can be brokenhearted. The very wise and intelligent can be brokenhearted. They come from all walks of life. All different types of people can be brokenhearted. If you're brokenhearted today, turn to the great physician, Jesus Christ. He can help you. He can mend that broken heart. He can make you whole again. And if you're lost, you've never been born again, he can make you a new creature. Amen. All right. We're just so excited to have this opportunity to come back before you again today. We're going to go over some prayer request at this time, and then we'll read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 in the Word of God. We see uh, several folks watching. We appreciate you all watching live, and uh, we appreciate everyone who shares. And uh, if anybody has any prayer requests, drop those in the comment box. Send them to me in a private message. We'll get them on, on the prayer list. We want to remember today, here we go with the prayer list. Let's pray for Dennis Clyde. Janice Lane and Sons, Wanda Belcher, Olena Harrison, David Isley, Marilyn, Kathy and Bobby Peak, Geraldine Bowens, the residents at Courtyards. Let's remember to pray for our nation and our leaders. Uh, Brother Jay Bradley has a very special unspoken request. We want to continue to pray for him and his wife, Ann, Randy McMillions and his wife, Sandy. We've got Donnie Watson with cancer. Let's pray for Paula Weldon and her family, the family of Ralph Brummett. Let's remember Walter Boyd, uh, Kenny Simpson's family as his great uncle Ezra passed away. Let's pray for that family. Uh, Brenda Peak and all of her loved ones, Jason Hammonds, Mark Harrison, Pastor Amal Paragi. Uh, Pastor Amal has a pastor friend in India with a 17-year-old son who has suffered a serious accident and uh, Pastor Amal is requesting prayer for this young man that God would touch him and help him. And also there are some financial needs of uh, property that needs to be purchased for ministry in uh, central India. So let's remember the work going on there. Brother John down at Courtyards. Uh, we missed him yesterday. We had a good time yesterday at Courtyards preaching the word of God. Uh, but several of our folks uh, had doctor's appointments, so we want to remember them when we pray. And Gary Vaughn was one of them, so let's, let's lift Gary up in prayer. Uh, Terry Mangrum is on the prayer list. Also, Margaret Fleener had sent me a request to pray for a lady that she's been sitting with. The Lord knows the need there, so let's lift her up in prayer. And I do see that request for Larry Hughes. I went to the hospital yesterday and visited with Larry. Got to talk to him face to face. So we certainly want to remember Larry. He's struggling with some health issues today. And also Linda Taylor's family. Let's continue to pray for Peggy Redmond with cancer. Melissa Daniels and Robert Etherton. Jennifer Smith and her baby. Brenda Rainwater. 
we got to meet uh, three folks on Broad Street a few days ago giving out Bibles. They are Mitzi, Kenny, and Brandon. So let's pray for these folks. We've got Lisa Crowder's Aunt Diana on the prayer list, Tammy Lawson's niece, and I believe that's all that have been sent to me. If I've missed anyone, it's not intentional. Just send me a little reminder and we'll make sure to add them to the list. All right. Prayer warriors, let's take these needs before God in prayer, and then we'll grab the Bible and read 1 Corinthians chapter 11 in the Word of God. Father, we thank you today. You are God, and beside you there are no other gods. You are the one true and living God, and we love you, and we thank you for another day of life. We're thankful, God, to be able to have the faith that you've given us to acknowledge that we are dependent upon you for the next breath that we breathe. You are sovereign over cancer. You have power over these illnesses. And I pray, God, that you'll give grace and strength to those who are sick. Lord, it's a small thing for an almighty God to deliver from sickness and disease. You are he who has risen with healing in your wings. With your stripes, we are healed. You are the great physician. And I'm thankful for the faith that you've given your people to know where they could come to for help and to know that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Lord, we ask today that you'll convict the hearts of those who are lost and may they turn from sin in repentance. May they repent and believe the gospel and call upon the Lord today for salvation. I pray God for the service tonight at the Free Gift Gospel Mission as we happily preach from Acts chapter 8. We pray for every God-called man who will minister from the pages of your word tonight give them souls for their labor and may these churches be blessed as they walk with jesus day by day in christ's name amen and amen all right here we go now with first corinthians chapter 11 we do invite you to follow along with us in the bible or if you don't have a bible handy we welcome you to just listen verse one Paul writing here says, be ye followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman, woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judging yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must also be heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What, have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, 
that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. For when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. All right, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 11. If you'll join us again tomorrow, we'll be back for uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Good to see Tyler and Joseph and Jay and Ronnie watching. God bless you all. Thank you all for watching today. And we thank God for everyone who will watch after the live session is over. Um, God bless you all. Come out and see us tonight at the Free Gift Gospel Mission, 1025 Maple Street in Kingsport, Tennessee. Come a praying and uh, may God bless you. God bless you, Terry. Thank you for watching. Y'all have a great day.